All right, so for today's big activity, uh, we're going to do uh, drawing with the brush tool again. We're going to start with the uh, with the Bart uh, with the Bart drawing again, uh, doing it in a different kind of way. So, if you go back on your desktop uh, to the web design folder, if you want to exit Animate for a moment and go to the web design folder on the desktop. Well, not exit, but minimize, animate. Go to the web design folder, go to our CIS126 folder. There seems to be another copy of it there for some reason. I would ignore that one. That might be someone else's work. Uh, you want to go into the homework one, shapes drawing, and copy the 01 BART file. Don't just double click it. You want to copy it to your desktop. Just drag a copy to your desktop. BART again. Remember, this is public. If you start to work on BART right here, and then you give them a mustache and all of that and save it, you suddenly did that to everyone else's file. So don't just double click it from this web design folder. Copy it from my folder to your desktop or flash drive. Once you've copied it to your desktop, then double click it. Then double click it so we can work with it. So make sure you've got a copy first. So copy that again from the network folder to your desktop. You'll probably get that warning about compatibility or whatever. Just ignore that. Make sure you open it up in, uh, in Animate. And then we'll do File Save As. Save As. Save it on your flash drive or desktop with um, your last name. So do a save as, just to make sure you've got a copy for yourself and put your last name on the file. Save as. If it gives you another sort of uh, compatibility warning, just click yes. So last time when we started to play with the uh, pen tablets for the first time, we did some freehand drawing. Uh, I want to do some drawing again here, uh, but with a starting point. I think it's perfectly valid uh, to do a bit of tracing to get used to the the hardware or the software, and then, of course, move on to your own original content. I put a few more model sheets up on the wall over there, on the 126 side. I found some more and I put them up there because an activity eventually will be that we will that you will create a model sheet for an original character. I'll explain what a model sheet is and examples, of course. But first, we're getting used to using Animate. We're used to using the brush tool, the pen tablet, and all of that. And eventually, you'll have an assignment like that where you create a character as a model sheet. That'll be later. So as a starting point here, we're going to draw Bart again based on the brush tool, pressure sensitivity, and such, and colorization. So we're going to reiterate some of the things we did last time. And I'll be giving you tips and advice so make sure, of course, here that you're on your draw here layer and not on the guide layer. Uh, activate the brush tool. And then activate pressure sensitivity and tilt. The two icons at the bottom there. Let's switch over then to a color of red. Obviously, Bart has a certain set of colors. But I'm going to start with red simply because if I'm starting with black and I'm drawing black lines on a black background, I'm not going to see where my lines are. And one of the things that I dinged a lot of people on was that you didn't hide or remove your guide layer. I could still see the original terrible scan on top of what you drew nice and beautiful. So one reason probably you forgot about that is if you were drawing black lines on top of your guide, you didn't see or didn't notice where the original guide was, but I did. So starting with some other color, 
will definitely let you see what you're doing. The brush tool, we saw some of its capabilities last time. And I think at about 20 size is pretty good to give us a variety of lines. And if I wanted to start to draw, you know, you may, you may start to perhaps draw something like this and try to follow it exactly. That may work, but it's also, remember, very forgiving in that you can go with these like single brush strokes like this overlapping and you'll be able to fix them later. With the pressure sensitivity, remember you get these different sizes. If I'm drawing something like that and then temporarily hide the layer, I'm getting something more interesting than the plain old lines. You can't get that out of uh, other tools perhaps. If I wanted to draw the line up here for the back of his head, I think that would be pretty good. And I went further than his hair, and maybe I went further than his ear. That's OK, because we'll be able to fix up those lines. The natural curve of your hand, remember, you can rotate the canvas a bit so that if your natural curve of your hand is in a certain direction. You can curve the paper a bit. That is with the rotate tool, which is hidden inside of the hand. Hand tool, click and hold, rotation tool. And that just rotates your paper as if in the real world, I was going to rotate my paper just a bit to draw. If you want to put that back as it was, you can just press the center stage icon up there. And that centers it again. So if I'm focused on a certain part of my drawing here and I want to move up, what's the quick way to move around again? Space. Remember, if I hold the space bar, I get the hand tool temporarily to move. So this one's going to be much more loose than the perfect shapes that we did before. And let's say I drew the eye here. I'm coming, coming outside of it a bit. Maybe that's OK. Maybe I want to redraw it. If you're drawing you know, one line or so at a time, you can undo and redo it a lot easier. <laughs> If I were trying to draw this eye with one stroke, if I went like this and I'm not letting go of the mouse, and I go like this, and I didn't like this final part here, but I like the rest, if I undo, I undid the whole eye. So perhaps think about just using one stroke or so at a time. That eye, I made it from three strokes. Eyelid, this other eyelid, the bottom. If I don't like that final piece, undo, and it only undoes the one final line. It may also be useful for you to zoom in. Remember, control plus, control minus on the keyboard. In my case, maybe I zoomed in 200%. The line does behave differently when you're zoomed in at different levels, however. Here I'm trying to draw the bottom of the eye. It's not quite working for me. What I could do is, with the hand tool, flip it upside down, because I can draw that line a lot easier in that direction. And then I can try to go in and draw that eye upside down. and then right side up again. Now we're hitting this drawing 
in a variety of ways so many times because again your your first big assignment is going to be a model sheet where you're going to draw an original character you may not be an artist that's okay uh, you know I'm not gonna accept stick figure drawings but look at the examples of the other classmates previous days over there there are some that you can tell they've drawn a lot all their lives there are some that you can tell they haven't drawn very much but they still created something interesting there's one over there with some eggs uh, it's on like the left side second column there's some egg characters and the story there was like they had a fight or something and they broke up and one of the eggs cracked or something something like that so you don't have to be a perfect artist you don't have to you know emulate uh, all your favorite artists I'm not expecting Alex Ross quality work here I'm not expecting you know Miyazaki work here but if you can get to that level great that's fun for me um, eventually you will be creating your own character so that's what we're doing over and over basic shapes brush tool colorization advanced colorization we'll have an activity on that later but for the moment a little tracing you could work in a couple of ways go through the whole thing and then clean it up or clean it up as you draw it and what the cleanup is is you can get the eraser tool or you could do the technique of overlapping your lines in this case right here I've drawn this eye I could then get the eraser and start to erase this part this part or as I also said with the technique of overlapping if you switch to your selection tool the black arrow you can then pull up that edge and overlap it with the other edge and it cuts it away and then that edge might be better than trying to erase so depending how you drew all of this that may be easier or harder and so here I'm overlapping maybe this edge at the top I want it to be a little pointier again pull these edges something like that yes you can go over here you should see the hand tool if you click and hold the hand tool you'll get rotation oh, okay. Maybe some of these curves, I can then pull them in here. I also, for a few people, mentioned or maybe took off one point or so about uh, the smoothness of your lines. Yes, it may be an artistic choice to have jagged lines, but I also want you to look at and think about the smoothness of the lines. Let's say this eye. I've drawn this eye this far. If I've gone further and started to draw the other parts, this eye would merge with the rest. So before I continue here, maybe I can select that eye, because it's separate, and smooth it a little bit. Maybe my hand was close, but I want a little smoothing. I selected the eye, and then I click the smooth. You have to be on the selection tool. Smooth. Not too much, because it might change it too much. There's the eye there. And so take a moment to start to draw the character. If you've already done, that's good. We'll then start to uh, do other things with it in a moment. But we're going to go in and complete the drawing. So I'll give you a couple of minutes. Uh, try to complete the drawing. Just trace it. Get used to the tool, rotating it. If you want to only focus on the drawing, you can press F4 on the keyboard and all the other panels disappear just to focus on it.
you want to use a different size brush, that's fine. I just picked 25, but if that's too much, you can choose different levels. And remember, the harder you press, or the lighter you press, you have different size brushes. <coughs> the character <coughs> so I'm drawing with the red color just so that I can see the contrast between what I've drawn and the background We'll be able to shift those colors to the right colors later because Animate is very versatile. In my case, I got it this far with my first pass through. There's parts I need to clean up in the hair, some of these overlapping lines. It's good overall. I'm going to grab the whole thing and smooth it one time. That often helps to get rid of some of the little jagged edges. So I can do Control A to select all when I'm done with it. And then with the selection tool, just hit it one time with smooth. Then I'm going to go in and clean up some of these elements. Erase your tool, overlapping lines. I really like the overlapping line method. Just grab the edge. What's that? Is this smooth? With this, uh, yeah. Do the control A to select all, and then smooth is found with when you've got the select tool. And then I was also saying I really like the, the overlapping line method, which is instead of the eraser tool, I'm going to grab the edge of a line and overlap it with the other lines, and that cuts it. In my case, I really like this spike of hair right here, and this is personal preference, but 
I like how smooth that is, and that's because I overlapped the lines. I wasn't going to be able to get something that nice with the eraser tool, but by overlapping the line that goes too far, overlapping it, it cut it really nice and straight. Like here, this looks okay, but if I want nice sharp edges, I need to overlap that point down here to cut it nice and sharp. So let's say I wanted to do that. I want that nice and sharp. Well, there seems to be a little corner there. So if I click and hold and drag and pull it out this far and then let it go, it gives me a sharp edge. on the lip, I think I would like this smoother. Well, you can select only the part you're trying to smooth. We saw this last time, but I'll reiterate it because there's only a little piece that I want to smooth. What you can do is get the lasso tool. So lasso like in Photoshop and such, you can do a freeform selection. With the lasso tool, I'm going to select around this area that I'd like to smooth only. Make a little selection only there hit it with smooth, and only that little piece that's bothering me will get smoothed out. So somewhere around here, make something selected like that. Selection tool, smooth it a couple of times. I think that's better. from previous days, we've got a class uh, Twitter account. If you would like your work featured on it, you could let me know or you could tweet at uh, SWCCIS126. That's um, the class Twitter account. If you'd like to show off things that you do in class, uh, you can tweet, mention this account, and then we'll retweet it. <coughs> and you never know, uh, more exposure could be good. see that the shirt is not closed. Um, I could fix that in just a moment. But I want to start to fill in some colors. So I'll get the paint bucket. I'll get a Simpsons skin tone. Drop that in. And a 
as for the shirt, I could finish the um, the brush outline, or I can put a temporary line with the line tool. I'm going to go with the line tool. I'll choose any color like green or something. And I'm going to try to put a line somewhere like that. It was a straight line, and then I curved it. Now that's closed. It was an open shape a moment ago, so the color wouldn't fill in. And then now it's a closed shape. So I can get the paint bucket again. Drop in a red color. Then I want to remove that line. I double click the line. It's a different color. I chose a, a green color, completely different than the other color that exists. So that is selectable if you double click that green line and delete it, and there's no gap. For the pupils, I'm not going to fill in full color black yet. I'm going to use a dark, dark gray. Fill in the eyes. white and if I change the stage color to something else like a light gray oops I noticed that his eyes were never filled in so if I was animating this and he walked in front of a tree he'd have leaves in his eyes because it's transparent it looked like I had white eyes but that was simply because I had a white background so I often recommend if you're gonna start a brand new drawing change your background color to some sort of gray so you can see, I forgot to fill in color here, and I thought it was filled in with white. No, it's transparent. So when you animate it and get more complex, you'll see the mistake. So you can uh, use the Select tool to select the background and just change the stage to some other color. Now I can see I need the paint bucket to fill in white to the whites of the eyes. So I filled in the basic colors. I forgot to change my outlines to black. You can still do it if you double click the outline. Or let's see, single click. Yeah, single click in this case. If you single click the outline, it'll highlight all of these fills that are that same color, which then we can easily change to black. So double clicking would select everything but in this case single clicking the edge would let you change it to black and everything changed everything that was touching changed the inner part of the ear didn't it wasn't touching but before we actually turn it black let's not turn it black I'm just showing you you can do that instead what I want to do is that technique you see sometimes where on the edge of the cartoon character it's not a black line, but it's a darker version of the main color. Uh, for example, here, his skin tone, I would want all of the edges that are part of the skin tone to be a darker version. Uh, it's not too complex here. And you've probably seen that in a variety of, of cartoons where the, the edge is not black, it's, it's a darker color or lighter color of the main skin tone. The way we can do that is with some creativity in dividing up our shapes. This one's relatively easy to do. If I were to get the paint bucket and drop in a color to that fill, 
it all changes. Well, if we cut the shape, I want a certain color up here and then to stop here. I want these to be a different color. What if I cut right here and cut right here? That will create a separate shape of color here and here. Let me show you first and then you'll see. If I get the line tool with some other color, like green, and run the line here, and run a line here, what that did was it separated this bunch of lines and these bunches of lines. Now if I do the paint bucket and fill here, it stopped right there. But when I remove that line, there will be no gap. This effect where I've got divisions of color with the line tool. I'm going to turn off this snap. It usually bugs me. So with the line tool turning off snap, I can get the paint bucket start with the skin tone and then get a darker version and this is the effect I'm going for here <coughs> not a black line but a dark version of the color since I put a line there it divided it and it didn't continue down there It's divided up so then I can uh, get a version of this color and darken it. So this color here is a separate entity simply because of that line division. I can then double click those lines and delete them. <clears throat> now I have this effect that the shirt is like a unit and then the skin. I missed a part of the inner ear, so I can just, uh, with the paint bucket, fill that in. This is not actually the style of The Simpsons. It is a black line on the edges. But this is a popular style of making the edges a darker version of the base color. And the way you do it is dividing it up. Let's say I wanted uh, the eyes to be a different color, uh, the edges of the eyes. So the same thing with the, with the line tool. I would decide where am I going to divide this up at, just to make it obvious. I'm going to make a line up here and a line right here. Well, why did I do it there? That's where it further connects with the rest of the drawing. This now is a group from here, all of this to here, and then the rest is a different group. So where I've divided up that line, I can fill in a different color just to make it obvious. Purple, click right here, and only that part of the drawing gets the other color because the edges, the outline, all had the same color, they would all get the same color. But here, because I've simply divided it with, with a line that is invisible, sort of, this can then change. So if I then select those lines, double click and delete them, Separate unit 
which I color the same as this here, and then their eyes will be purple. I just chose a purple color to make it obvious, but when you make your own drawings, uh, you'll make them make sense. Something like that. So now these lines look like they're they're separate. They were not a moment ago because they they were the same color. Now that they're a different color, they are separate. That was just for show. I did want the basic color, so I can just put it back, because it's all one unit, <coughs> click, and it all changes. And now that everything's the same color, if I then go with some other color, everything changes again. They're all touching, they're all the same color. So I filled in here the basic colors the edges so I do want you to try this uh, make it so that the edges of the of those colors are a darker tone I think I'll go with an even darker tone colors and then we'll go on.
Okay, so if I fill in my basic colors, then I can start to fill in the more advanced colors. So I'll do the cell shading style again, and then later we'll look at more advanced colorization with gradients. But with the cell shading, it's hard edges. I want to, again, be very basic that on the left side is the light side, and on the right side is the dark side meaning that there is a light source. Let's say that there is a light bulb over here. So the light bulb is coming across over here and hitting Bart's face over here, brighter, mid-tone, and then dark. So very basic kind of lighting. We can make it pretty complex, of course, if you have that experience, great. But I'm gonna make it so that it's a basic left and right, or any angle, but we'll do left and right. So the way I would do this is start to divide up the... Right now they're just shapes. They look like Bart's, but they're just shapes. So I further want to divide up the shapes for the dark tones, the light tones, the mid tones. And so I'm going to use the line tool because that will let me cut the lines, the shapes. And with the line tool, if I first make some sort of line over here somewhere, I'm going to obviously refine it later. But I've made a, a line here, pulled it out over here. And then another line on the left somewhere here. So in very general terms, the left side will have some brightness over here, the dark side on the right side, some darkness, and in the middle, the mid-tone. Now, obviously, if I really wanted to do it right, I want the shadow of the nose and the eyelids and all of that. I'll show that in a moment. But here, I've got these basic straight lines, which I can use the selection tool to start to curve them. So this can curve like this because... Let me choose a better color that's visible for you. Uh, What's visible? That green is not too visible for you. I think the purple looked good. Yeah, it's better. So, the uh, this if I pull this line, only this line curves because it touched here and it touched here, and then that became a separate segment. So every time you're overlapping these lines and these fills, different colors, they become different segments. And that's useful because then I can start to push and pull some of these things. It takes practice to know where to pull it, where to push it, and all of that. In my case, when I drew the right line, there was a, a touch here and down here. When I pull that line to the left, this far, let's say, well, now what I've done is it's touched here. So that's a division of a line. And now this can have this curve this direction and this direction. And now I touch here, so now that can have that curve. So all of these parts that were overlapping are new segments. And now I'm starting to build these curves where I can fill in the darker color to a lighter color. I would love to have a curve right here so that it does the eye further out over here, but that's also affecting the curve up on the head. Well, what I can do is with the line tool, maybe put a line here, and now I've got a spot where that can be curved, and where that's independent. What's that? They're not moving. Uh, make sure they cross over. Let's take a quick look.
So here I am putting these various lines. All of this is in the purpose of then filling in with the different shades of the color. So if I start again with the paint bucket and grab the the base color, go to the color mixer, and then switch to your brightness uh, selector. Whatever your base color is, then you can do brightness darker and lighter. Let's see, I'll go a little darker, fill that in. And I'm starting to get the dark edge of the character. The darker the lighter it is, the more dramatic. If I only want a very light look to it, I can further tweak that. This particular color of yellow, it seems that it's maximized. Uh, so with the saturation, I can then choose lighter versions of the color. further refined and one way one little technique that I that I learned in an art class when I took art classes was if you do the squint test onto what you're drawing if you squint at it what that does is it kind of all the detail falls away and you just see the basic tones if I look at it normally I see every single line and every single curve is distracting if you squint at what you've drawn the details will kind of fall away, and I'm starting to see the three-dimensionality of it. Try that on your own drawings. Just squint at what you've drawn, and uh, <coughs> you'll see, you know, the general tones, um, which then you can use to continue refining it. Yes, question. This is still completely editable. If I start to pull these lines over, they still behave. They still adhere to where my lines are at. If I don't remove that yet, I can still change it. Maybe I wanted the nose over like this. Then maybe I want to do the, um, you know, the uh, the eye, the portion of the eye over here. Well, this is one big curve, and I'd like a little curve down here, so I'd have to um, use the line tool to create a spot over here, perhaps. Something like this. 
which then I curve. And now I've got a spot here that is curved, thinking in terms of there's an eyeball there, a circle, but with straight lines and pushing them and pulling them, I've made a shape which I can fill in with the same color. All of these red lines, I'll remove them eventually and there will be no gaps. And I think this is one of the most amazing things of drawing with, with um, Animate, that if you're doing it in this way that I'm showing, all of these lines, eventually you can remove them and there's no <coughs> gaps. If I was trying to do that in the real world with real media, uh, it would be pretty impossible. But here in a digital format, a digital medium, I have much more control. Because I'm curious how it will look if I double click to select it all and delete. That's how that's coming along. After those lines go away, then I'm getting the result. I'm going to put them back. If I take out the left side. Something like that. On the projector, I notice up here for you guys, it's a lot darker. So I might have to uh, brighten up that lightness. I can still do that. Even though I've removed the lines, these are independent shapes. That can be filled in with a brighter color and other color, other colors. They're all independent shapes. While I have these divisions, I could do the eye. <coughs> the eye also, if I just have a pure white, well, that's a certain effect. But if it's an eye, if it's a sphere shape, there should be a darker and a lighter version of the eye, or portion of the eye. Let's see, maybe I'll curve that and curve it here. <coughs> a slight curve and then fill in a darker <laughs> version of, of white which will be a, a shade of gray something below the lip shirt. I don't like that line there at all. It's too far out. So I'll ignore it and instead draw a line over here. So you can't see it here, but there was a line going over here and I thought it was too far. So maybe I want it over here somewhere. I just ignore that one and I draw a line here and curve it and I've got a darker area to fill in shadow of the shirt.
So if I've gone this far, maybe I can remove my lines now and see what I've done. Uh, this mess of lines on the left is separate from this on the right. Uh, I can tell that because when I double click the left bunch of lines, all of those select, but not the ones on the right. Well, I need to double click the left and press delete, and then double click the right and press delete. Or, if I have any lines that are overlapping, so what if there's a line overlapping on the left side? This left group of lines, if I overlap it with this right group of lines, and I double click that, it's all the same color, so it will all select. Double click that, it all selects, delete, and then everything goes away at once. So this takes practice, of course. I put these lines around in these areas, and I'm liking the result. You may do yours, and you're, and you're not. That's OK. It takes practice, this uh, drawing. And uh, in these varieties of styles, takes practice. Where do I put my lines? Where do I put the highlights? Again, the easiest way is to think about it on the left side is the light source. On the right side, then, is the opposite of the light source, so it's darker. On the left side, you've got some bright colors. On the right side, you've got some dark colors. I'm also thinking in terms about that it's a three-dimensional object. So this eye here is a circle. There's a curve where it's darker and lighter. To fully get it, I could put a brighter color here as well. This is an object as well. So there's plenty that I could still work with here, whatever style you're trying to draw. Let's take our let's take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more, and then we'll talk about the homework assignment. It's 11:30. We'll take a break until 11:40. See how far you're at here. If you need help, call us over. And then at 11.40, uh, we'll do a little more and then the homework.